God is good all the time. Amen. Hey, remain standing because in a few moments we're going to welcome our special guest. But before I do, I want to just give one other, one more quick shout out. Uh, our, our senior high ministry, our junior, our senior high ministry freshman to a, a senior uh, are meeting for the first time tonight in 2019. So doors open at five o'clock. Uh, service begins at 5.30, the experience does, and we want you to get your teenagers out here, and uh, it's going to be an incredible time, and so we're excited for uh, the change and the shift that we see happening. Um, not all teenagers are bad. we got some good ones here, amen? Um, if you love your teenagers, come on, give it up for them. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, without further ado, I want you to help me and Holly give a big Belt and Crossroads welcome to some of our best friends. Archbishop Anthony Jones and Apostle Kershawn Jones as they come to the house today. Thank you. Thank you so much. Amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Well, if you're guests for the first time today, we, uh, we started something. We did a thing, and uh, we're going to finish it. Um, we're going to finish it uh, this month for sure. We're going to start and finish it. And in one month, God is going to make your marriage amazing. If you believe that, say amen. Uh, and, uh, but in all seriousness, we, uh, we, uh, this is the first time we've ever, we've done messages on, on, on marriage before, but I don't know that we've ever carved out an entire month to focus on it, and, and uh, we need to. And, and so this is not, so if you're here today and you say, well, my marriage isn't on the rocks and we're not talking about divorce, I'm good. No, no, no. Tune in. This is for all of us. Um, you're going to hear that today. And so Holly and I have intentionally uh, scheduled the people that are speaking each week. Uh, we've intentionally scheduled them because we want to speak to all the flavor, all the color of what marriage is. And, um, and so, you know, from those that come from a divorce background, a separation, and blended families, we'll have a family actually speaking next week about that unique situation. But... Um, I don't, I don't know where to start to talk about the people to my right. Um, we, uh, we've been friends for 20 years now, almost, well, 21 years, really. And um, we first met each other on a missions trip to uh, Nicaragua, and we just became brothers. We, we did. And uh, he, I, have, I have leaned on him many, many times as a pastor, just as a friend, as a mentor, uh, when I've needed clarity, when I've needed a, a man of God I trust, a, Obviously, I use my dad. I, I lean on my dad a lot, but um, I need other men in my life. Um, I think accountability. You hear me talk about it. I say accountability is a real thing. We all need it. Um, I have someone I can be accountable to, as well as a friend who will love me and not judge me, who will pray for me. And um, man, we just right. I, we could go on and on. We love these two people, and I want you to get your pens and your paper. However, you're taking notes, seriously, because some truth bombs are going to be dropped in the house today. And uh, we want you to. So, welcome to people. Amen. Help me. I don't know. Okay. Amen. Now, oh, I know you can hear me now. Amen. Are y'all blessed today? Amen. 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 So, I am um, Apostle Krishan Jones, the wife of this handsome man of God that's sitting beside me. I've been with him for 25 years in August. We have a little girl that's seven years old, and we love the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. Hey, bless you, everyone. It's exciting to be here and to share. Um, as we were sharing with uh, Pastor Harry, we're home. We've been coming here since we met in uh, 21 years ago in Nicaragua, and um, it's amazing because from day one, um, not only did there was there an incredible bond between uh, Pastor Matt and myself, but Pastor Harry embraced us as family. He literally got up in the old sanctuary one Sunday and said, come here, let me, let me introduce my other son. Don't he look like me? He's my height. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but it's family. It's home. It's been amazing. And... Um, as my beautiful queen says, I've been married to this amazing woman for just about 25 years. Uh, been together 26 years in October. We met on a Halloween night, um, <laughs> Sunday the 31st. <laughs> well, well since you brought there. it up. Let's <laughs> in a club. <laughs> um, met on a Sunday night, and then 
It was on a Sunday. Started talking. It was a Sunday night. Um, <laughs> we got on the phone Monday around 1 o'clock. Talked for the rest of the day. She came to see me Tuesday, and we've been together since. Amen. And um, it's just been an amazing, amazing journey. And I would first and foremost say without God, we wouldn't have made it. Amen. No doubt that we wouldn't true. have made it without him uh, being in our lives and guiding and leading us. Amen. Amen. You know, let's talk a little bit about um, that period in your life where there was a separation, where it was touch and go. You know, there was a lot of transition in your lives from, you know, moving to Texas. There was a lot going on. There were, um, there were a lot of, you know, outs- there were a lot of things you couldn't control, right? There were a lot of outside variables. Um, you know, he, former military, uh, still holds um, some Army powerlifting records today. And um, I was going to have him do some feats of strength this morning, but I decided not to. <laughs> but, uh, but in all seriousness, talk about, you know, because I think every marriage in here can identify with. There are, there are certain things that we can't control, right, that we do have the ability to manipulate. But then there are these outside factors that happen to us, whether it's through a job, a career, you know, the external things that we have to move and walk in and be a part of, whether we want to or not, deployment or, you know, tr- re- you know, PCSing you to another place. So, um, but yeah, talk about that, that skid that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, so we was married for the first year and I will tell I will tell you, I can't duplicate what I did in the first service. So I'm just going to go right in. All right. Is that okay? So we were basically, we were the first year and I say this to everybody, first year can be very challenging. And um, when we got married in the first year, and I was 22, so I really didn't even know myself trying to be a wife. And in the process of 22 years old, having the opportunity now to say that I am a wife and trying to get to get things in order, um, we were really different. And my husband, (laughs) in the process of the first year, was learning himself again, because he was still young too. You know, sometimes you still have to know who you are. And in the process of learning who he was, I'm now married in this transition, 22, trying to become one. He's somewhere trying to become the husband, trying to become one, and God is talking to him. And in the process of God talking to him, he's now saying, it's time for me to leave, it's time for me to do other things. And God brought him to Texas. And that process, when he first went, I did not have the desire to go I love y'all over here, but it was not, um, you know, where I thought that I should be. And then that process, he left, and he came here to Texas, and I wind up staying at home. And we, that was a hard transitional year because we didn't think we was going to make it. It was so easy. When you're being separated, you're not seeing each other every day, we really did not think we were going to make it. And this man of God called me in November, and he left was around January. He left in January, and then in November, he said, sweetheart, I am called. I know I'm called, and I just want to let you know that you can either come here. Well, you probably can say that word better than I can. You want to say exactly how you said it? Yes. (laughs) So the Lord had me to call her, and it was amazing because he said to me, he said, you're going to call your wife. You're going to tell her you're called to the ministry. You're going to tell her, because, you know, God already knows our responses before we give them. And he said, you're going to tell her that if she decides to leave, you're going to let her go. And then if she leaves and decides to come back, you're going to take her back. And I said, what? (laughs) You want me to tell her, excuse me, Lord? (laughs) He was like, no, you need to tell her that. And I'm going to tell you how funny the Lord is. So it literally was, I was in my... I was what they call a geographical bachelor. I was in the military at the time because I did 27 years before I retired. But I was in the military. I was in my barracks. Uh, it was a nice day. He said, you're going to call. We didn't have phone in the room, so it was a pay phone right outside, just across the um, yard. And so he said, you're going to call her. You're going to tell her that. I said, okay. And so I go. I start walking. By the time I get to the bottom of the stairs, the bottom falls out. So it's raining, cats and dogs. And I'm like, What? And, I mean, it's literally clouds, black, rain. You can barely see. I said, well, I'll call her when it stops raining. He said, no, you're going to call her now. <laughs> and I'm like, okay. So I walk out, pouring down rain. 
by then I'm weeping a little bit because I'm like, I don't want to tell this woman that um, because I really, you know, was in love with my wife. And I said to her, I called her, she, and I got her because it was even hard for us to catch up with each other on the phone. I got her on the phone the first time. And I said, look, I'm called to the ministry. Um, and I have to answer this call. I can't, I can't run anymore. And I told her, I said, the Lord said to tell you that if you left, I was going to release you. And if you came back, I would take you back. And she said, okay. She got quiet for a second. And then she said, she said, well, I have no doubt you're called to the ministry, but I'm not a first lady. Y'all heard me. I the, said, I'm not nobody's I'm not first lady with, with no big, big giant head on, on my head saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah. <laughs> that was not what you married, okay? <laughs> But right. do what you got to do. Now, I'm not, I, I still feel the Lord, all right? Do what you got to do. But that's not who I am. But amen. <laughs> <laughs> but then, so I did that. And then literally uh, within days, she called me back. And she said, okay, I'm going to try to come out there. When you come home for Christmas, I'll come with you back to Texas. And right after that, she called me within two days. And she said, now, I have a question for you. She got job offers from all her favorite places that she liked to shop. They were offering her jobs, management type positions. And then jobs she had been wanting, they were offering her money, jobs. Because she's a working woman, hardworking. Uh, we bless God she retired from the bank in March. <laughs> uh, but she was like, I'm getting all these offers. If God wants me with you, why am I getting all these opportunities now? And I thank God for the voice of Holy Spirit because he said, tell her that's the enemy keeping, trying to keep you all apart because he has an inkling of who you all are together. And I shared that with her. And she didn't tell me over the phone, but she said when I said that, it gave her peace. She knew. And that was like two weeks before I was coming home for Christmas. Um, and then she came back out here with me, and I can say the rest is history, but it's... Uh, <laughs> Cried it's the amazing. whole 24 hours yeah, she did cry here. the whole drive here because she'd never really been away from home. Her family cried, including her uncles, when she left home because she never, they were just, they're a very close-knit family. We are a very close-knit family. And, um, but it's been amazing. Amen. Well, you Amen. came to the greatest state ever, so it's yeah. not a, I mean, you yeah. know, it's whatever. Well, and it's, it's kind of like we know, it's like you said, the start is a, of, the, of a marriage is often challenging. Um, you Tell us a little bit about, you guys had really interesting, very different um, answers earlier about, you know, talking back to your younger self, those first kind of early years. You just took us to where you got, we're together now. We've got past that. Tell us, what, what would you say to your younger self? Um, for me, I would tell my younger self, especially being a man of God, don't struggle with and don't let anybody talk you out of what God tells you to do. Because nobody can tell you how to be a husband like he can. That's good. Yes, you have mentors. You have accountability. I believe in that. You have spiritual fathers, mothers, whatever you want to call them, big brothers, whatever you want to call them. Um, they're phenomenal to have in your life. But at the end of the day, you have to see what God tells you about your marriage. Because nobody knows you like he Amen. does. Nobody knows your spouse. See, as a man of God, you have an assignment. Just like uh, Ephesians 5 talks about how... Um, the husband, how Christ spoke over the church and presented the church unto himself as a glorious church. The husband has that responsibility to do the same, to speak over. <laughs> to See, speak that's what a helpmate does. Amen. Make sure that they are right in every way. <laughs> <laughs> but to speak over your spouse and to help your spouse become who she is as a husband. That's your assignment, to find out from God, who is this woman you've given me? What have you placed in her? And how can I, in a Christ-like way, because really we are Christ's representative in the earth. How can I, representing Christ, speak into her life the way uh, that you would speak into her life if you were here? And technically, because Christ lives in us, according to Galatians 2 and 20, he is here. And so we have to handle things not how we want to, the way he would, um, being here. And so I would tell my younger self, follow God's plan. Because only God's plan will get you through the things that it will take you through. Um, to being victorious, and just walking in your purpose and destiny. I, I don't want to interrupt, but I want you to use the word that you used in the first service, the servant. <laughs> um, I, because, man, I, that really spoke to me. Um, okay. it, it made me rethink some things, literally, as you were talking, like, 
the Holy Spirit was downloading some things that I need to circle back with her on. But just the idea, because for us as men, let's be honest, our pride right. can get in the way. Right. And like, I'm not going to, you know, they're here to serve me. You know, they're here to meet my needs. And, right. But, you know, you talk about, so yeah, you, 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 you do. <laughs> so um, we had been in Texas probably mm, about seven months, six, seven months. And so I'm at the house talking to the Lord. And I asked him, I said, okay, I want to get this thing right. I thank God for the example of my dad. He's an incredible father, incredible husband, a praying man, man of God. Uh, I said, but I hear all these things in barbershops, different places of what men say um, they should be doing and how marriage is and, you know, all the little uh, colloquialisms. I said, I want to be the husband you call me to be. How do I become the husband you call me to be? And I'm waiting for this deep scriptural answer. And he asked me a question. The Holy Spirit asked me a question. He said, do you hear my voice? And I'm like, yes, I hear your voice. He said, no, do you hear my voice? I said, yes, I hear your voice. He said, are you filled with the Spirit? I said, yes, I speak in tongues. I mean, Lord, what are you asking me? So finally I got quiet. Uh, and then he said, okay, so you hear my voice. You listen. He said, everything I tell you to do in this house, you do. No questions asked, no gripes. Just do what I ask you to do. Whatever I say, you do it. I said, easy enough, cool. About a month in... I said, I, I went, I said, okay, Lord, I'm washing dishes at the time. I said, oh, okay, help me understand this because I feel like a slave in my house. Help me understand something because you're not requiring of her what you're requiring of me right now. Now, she's an amazing woman. She, I mean, she'll do anything. Um, we, don't have, we don't struggle on chores, do, duties, none of that stuff. We just flow. Whoever can get to it first, we knock it out. Um, yet, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I, I'm, help me understand. He said, well, he said, you've heard the prophecies. You've seen what I've shown you. You even know what your wife has seen. He said, what I've shown her about your destiny, your purpose, where I'm sending you, what you're going to be doing for my kingdom. He said, how can you serve multitudes, serve nations? You can't serve your spouse. Oh, that's good. You can't serve in your own home. You can't serve your family. He said, your family should be the first fruits of who you are. That's good. Your prayer good. life, your, de your deliverance ministry, who you are as an apostle, a prophet, who you are as a man of God, as a man of prayer. Before anybody testifies, and even now, he says, your daughter should be able to say, oh, my dad prays all the time. Mm. They should, your family has to get the first fruits of that. And from that point on, I never struggled. And I know that God used that to help her trust God more, to trust him as a father more, as her heavenly father more. Amen. 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 And because of that, um, like I said, I came from a divorced family. So for me, it was different for me to be able to do that. So what I would say to myself if I was younger was that everything that I've seen, and I will tell you one of the biggest things is to trust God, mm. to truly learn how to trust this man of God. But, the, but I realized by not having the value of trust, it wasn't just to the point, and I'm not talking about a man, and because a lot of people always want to say, "What does trust mean? Um, does that mean that that person you don't trust them? You think that they're gonna be with another woman and whatever?" That's not what all trust is about. Mm. Okay, trust is that can you truly say that your heart belongs to this person and that it will not be hurt? You will not be hurt. It's not about everybody want to always put trust into affairs and all of that. That's not what I'm talking about. Mm. When I can literally know that I can lay down myself and realize that he has me. So that was one thing I would say. Learn how to trust, honor. Oh, honor. And when I say honor, it's not that I ever dishonored my husband. But when you truly learn what honor means, and I will tell you, every one of you, really look up the definition of honor. And the way that it needs to be given because it's not being done. In society today, people do not know how to honor each other. They talk to each other any type of way. They don't know how to be able to bring certain things together. We don't know how to communicate. We don't know how to do anything. And I will honestly tell you, in one of the biggest places where you see mostly that there is not honor is in the church. We don't know how to honor our pastors, uh, elders of the church, well, um, the teachers. We don't know how to honor that. And we're coming up with a society now that does not even understand honor. And we're going to say, yes, you're going to get married and everything else, but you don't even know the characteristics of what it is to be a That's wife. Good. 
or a husband. That's good. So I would definitely say that that is one thing that I will speak to myself is to learn truly what, as a, you know, to give advice to myself as being younger. Learn what it is to truly honor, to know what trust is, and still value yourself. That's good. One of the things, um, we obviously not everyone necessarily in the room is married or, or ha is at the time, or maybe they long to be. One of the things we talked about in first service, and, and you kind of talked about it in context to Ari, was, was the promises and, and knowing what he said to you. Uh, share a little bit about that for, for both sides of that. Yes. So I will say to you today, um, the promise of God. Mm. Don't ever give up on the promise. Amen. I will tell you, um, we were challenged to the point where I had had, um, we had to have fertility. Um, in the process, God, well, okay. So in the process, we're sorry, we're doing our little conversations to make sure we get everything in. But I will tell you this. We had to go through, I was 39 years old when I had my daughter, but I always knew that I was supposed to have a child. And in the process of having her, there was multiple complications. I had multiple miscarriages. Um, and those are difficult in itself. And anybody that ever had a miscarriage or any, any way of lost a child, um, especially women, y'all will understand what I'm saying. I know men, it hurts you too. But it's something that's deep down inside a woman because you feel like you can't fulfill what has already been inside of you. Do y'all understand what I'm saying? It's something that we are supposed to be able to do is to bring a child into this, life, into this world. And in the process, I will tell you, but never give up on the promise Come of on. God. Yeah. Yeah. Through the miscarriages we wind up, anybody that knows, when I say fertility, she, we, my great-grandmother, my great which is past and gone, she always called her the, my miracle child as well. In the process, y'all know to even to have a baby and have to go through the complete thing financially is off the chain. It's thousands. It can be about anywhere from fifteen to $20,000. Yeah. Our bill was close to $20,000, the original bill. But... Because, and I will tell you, when we had our miscarriage, that was one thing that my husband didn't share with me, but he had shared it with my family. And I heard him say this, and we don't talk about it that much, but he said, in this powerful man of God he was, he said, Lord, how would I be able to come up with that type of money for us to be able to continue to be able to do this again? Because when we first did it, it was easier because we tried one process, but I wind up and have lost both fallopian tubes. I had no choice but to go completely with in vitro. $20,000, he's sitting there and seeing his wife just lose twins, because I was pregnant with twins growing in my tubes, and in the process to still be strong for me. He didn't come in the room and was crying on me. You know what I'm saying? He stood out in the, in the, in the, wall, in the hallway and cried out, and he said, God, how am I going to be able to provide this type of thing for my wife? But I will tell you when you got a promise from God. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you hear me? A promise from God. Yes. He will do it. So I speak to you today. Don't let nothing stop you from what God said is your promise. It will come to pass. Mm -hmm. So what took $20,000 was $800 for us. Amen. Amen. Come on. $800 for us. And I will tell you that when we went through the process, my aunt blessed me with a bracelet, and I'm wearing it today. And the bracelet says God's promise. And it says December 17, 2010. On August 8th, August 8th, 2011, the promise is here. And you see her on front row. God will do it for you. When you trust him and know and hold on to what he has, mm -hmm. he will do it. So I say this, I, and can I just? I, do I, your I, thing. I, I, Go ahead. So <laughs> said, do I, I say that this morning because something just hits me. Because I will tell you, all year long, God has given me some things that he told me to pray for. The first thing he told me to pray for is God's love. 
But the second thing he told me that we need to pray for is salvation of marriages. So for us to be even asked and, you know, to come forth, you know, Pastor Matt, I know this is something that God laid in my heart. I've been speaking this all year long. And I, you know, y'all say salvations. And I heard, I said, God, salvation of marriages. Why would you even bring it forth that way? Because when we think of salvation, what do we think of? And salvation is deliverance. But what is deliverance? To be set free. Mm. We have been in a society where people do not even understand that marriages need to be set free. We don't understand marriage the way that God intended for marriage to be. Mm. And I decree and declare today that in this house, marriages will be set free. Do you hear me? Salvation of marriages shall and will come to pass. Mm. Whatever you're going through right now, if you hold on to that God says that this is your wife, I don't need you to understand, if God told you that that woman is your wife, then you say, God, she is mine, and I'm not giving her up. We're going to continue to fight. I don't care what it is. Like I told my husband, we don't have to like each other. We might fall out in love with each other, but guess what? We're going to be together. And I'm telling you today, that's what you need to say to yourself. So husband, speak that to your wife. Say, baby, you are mine, and you're not going nowhere. (laughs) Wives, speak the same thing. Say, maybe you might have gained a little bit of weight. I don't know what has happened. (laughs) Whatever has happened. I love you. You are mine. You're not going anywhere, and we are here to stay. We will be survivors, and we will be set free, and the devil will not have any place in our home. Do you hear me? That's what you need to be speaking. Every word that you speak will come to pass. That's why I said what comes out of your mouth, you need to be careful. Because if you even thinking divorce or spoke divorce, you need to denounce that right now and say you're going back to the pits of hell because you have no room to be in my house. I will be set free and we will have deliverance of our marriage today. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's what you need to speak over yourself. Amen. Amen. I'm sorry, man. No. No, no. (laughs) I apologize. Amen. Amen. You know, um, so Holly and I, we get a privilege as your pastors. We get a front row seat to all of your lives. You know, you welcome us into the most intimate parts. And so I know for a fact there's some people in the room who are, um, that is on the table. That's an option. Right, and of course, my counsel is always like, "Let's take it off the table. Let's let's divorce rethink it." Divorce cannot be on the table. It cannot be. No. So, if you are speaking divorce, you need to take it off. That is not an option. Yes. Your position, God said, "When I have," I'm sorry, man. I'm so no, sorry. No. But when God says that, I the first thing that God did, He said, "It's not good for man to be alone." God said, "I created man for love." He said, I created man so that man will be able to be, that I can pour. God said, I'm pouring my love on man. Mm -hmm. And then he said, it's not good for man to be alone. Because he said, I don't want you to just want me. God said, I need to put someone in this earth that you can be able, what was birthed in you, which is the spirit of God, was birthed into man. Now, God said, man, I need you to have that spirit of God birthed into her. That's why woman came out of man. And when that's why when we look at it, women are so important. But I will tell you something. What you speak, because sometimes, man, I'm going to tell you, a lot of times the women is the one saying, I ain't dealing with this anymore. I'm not going to deal with this anymore. Because we get tired. We get weary. We get upset. We don't think that we can do it. But women of God, there is something inside of you. That's why there's a womb inside of you that you have the capability to pray. You have the capability to speak those words and push it out. That's why you can have a child. Yeah. Because God says that you can carry that seed and it will come to pass. So that's why I say to you what comes out of your mouth. So if it's in your mouth today, divorce, you've got to take it out. Yeah. I'm telling you, we're going to rip it on out of your mouth today. <laughs> it's not going to be an option. Because it's not what God said. Amen? Amen. Amen. It can't, it's not an option. So you need to say I am going to be delivered from that word today. Amen? Amen. Amen. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, to those in the house that have been through divorce, there's hope. Um, what I don't want you to hear is, 
oh, well, I've, I've been through divorce, therefore I'm discarded, or I'm a terrible person, or... Listen, I know sometimes, right, it takes two to tango. It, to, it takes two to make it work, and... But you can have one person say, you know what, like, you can have one person doing all the trying and another person giving up. So I want to say to the people in the room that you tried and someone did not want to try with you, um, you're not a terrible person. And you are still loved by the king of the universe. You are still valued. You are still a precious commodity to him. And I know there are people in this room who have been through multiple marriages. And the enemy wants to assign labels to us right. and things that, and I love what, what you said, Krishan, that, man, when God speaks over us, that's, that's the final word. Yeah. It doesn't matter what culture, society, or the, or the enemy yeah. may say about us. God's word is final. His word's eternal. His word supersedes any label that's been placed on us. So, well, I'm a divorcee, right? I've been divorced. I've been uh, you know, I've had a miscarriage. I, I, I've been fired from my job. Right? All these labels that are put on us. But when, when God's word speaks over us, he is speaking a new identity. He's speaking a fresh start on us. So I just really felt prompted by the Holy Spirit to say that for those in the room or you're watching online. Like, you know, you went through divorce and it's not because you didn't want to go through it. Like, you fought it. Like, you did everything in your power to fight it. And the other person just had, didn't want to do it. And the enemy has been speaking over you a false narrative, a false label, and telling you something that you are not, and maybe you've bought into it, you've thought, man, that is me. Or maybe if I was a better husband, or if I was a better wife, or if I would have tried harder, and that record just goes on and on and on. We cancel that today in Jesus' name. We rebuke that spirit, that oppressive spirit, that it's a demonic lie. It is not from God. And we call you redeemed. We speak over you that... Uh, you, God has given you a restart, that God can still bring someone new into your life, that your, your latter days, as he told Jeremiah, can be better than your former days, right? That God is not done with you, that you are not discarded, that there's still hope for you, there's still someone he has for you, there's still life for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Did you have something you want to say? I feel like you do, yeah. He, Holly and I know when he gets this look that he's... There's a word, yeah. Um, no, I just wanted to share that um, if you all really understood the power that God has given you in this house for marriage, I'm not saying he doesn't bless other houses, but there's something special that God wants to do, not just for the marriages in this house, but through the marriages in this house, in this community, in this region. I, Matt has not talked to me, Pastor Matt has not talked to me about what's going on in the region, but there is, every time there's some type of step forward for marriage, so any type of, looks like a revival of marriage, the enemy hits this area, I don't know why, but this area, pretty hard uh, when it comes to coming against marriage in general, uh, like a, an incredible backlash. I believe this house is in place even where, I don't know, strategically with this location, there's something about geographically this location and what it is like on the corner of something, but it's like a cornerstone. This location, the people in this house, these marriages, even the reason these marriages are being attacked so much is because there's an assignment for marriage for the region from the, out of this house to be a blessing, not just people, but even pastors. I see ministers and pastors and leaders who are being connected to this house, to you all and to your parents to help them groom their marriages and, and grow their marriages and fortify their marriages. So grab hold of the grace because there's a special grace on this house for marriage. Grab hold of the grace of God and trust the grace of God no matter what you're going through how bad it seems, how hard it seems, it's going to be work. But when you get into the grace of God and walk in the grace of God in an area, supernaturally things will begin to happen for you that you can't explain. You don't have to be able to explain at times why your marriage is working. All you do is thank God that it's working as you're growing. But there's a special grace for marriage upon this house where while you're learning, while you're growing, some of you are transitioning 
and you've been married a long time and it's just brand new stuff in your marriage happening, brand new things in Christ. God is re, uh, even reconnecting and transforming your thinking of marriage and your role and how you do things and how you handle things in marriage. Embrace what God is doing and trust and lean on his grace to walk through this transition because he wants to take you into a better place. He doesn't want you just to have longevity in marriage. He wants you to enjoy marriage. Yeah. And understand, marriage is not called to make you happy. Come on. Marriage is called to make you holy. That's good. And in the holiness of God, you're happy yeah. in Amen. your marriage. That's good. So understand, God designed marriage to make you holy, not happy. But now happy is, is a residual of being holy in Christ. It's amazing when you don't have to struggle with, well, I did this and I did that, or I did this, or I talked to her wrong, I didn't do this. But when you can just flow in the holiness of God in your marriage and let him make you the holy vessels he's called you to be. Because Ephesians says marriage looks like Christ in the church. That when they look at our marriages, they should see Christ in his church, yeah, according yeah. to Ephesians chapter 5. Yeah. So grab hold of that grace, and we speak that special grace over your life, that God will bless your marriage tremendously and that you'll begin to flow in the things that you need in your marriage like never before in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand our feet. Let's pray. And uh, we're here to pray with you. We're going to open up our altars. We always do. Uh, maybe you're here by yourself today and your spouse didn't come. You can come and pray. Maybe you're here together and it's been a long time since you've actually physically knelt together and like held hands and prayed together, like you've not done that in a long time, we're giving you space to do that. So we're gonna sing and we're gonna worship the Lord as we do, my parents, our staff, our elders, we're gonna be ready to minister over you and pray over you. So let's sing, let's worship the Lord, let's make this a house of prayer and uh, let's see what God wants to do in this place today. Amen.